feel like you're rocking the entire table. It's because I'm giving him everything I got. Relax here, relax. Beautiful. Oh. Did great. Okay. I think I'm just mentally scared. I know. I'm not going to go more than you can handle. Oh. Yeah, okay. I've been doing a couple of stretches here and there, and uh, you know, I was I recently moved, so I put a lot of pressure on my back moving furniture, and uh, I stopped going to the gym because of all the pain. I should have not done that, but I think I, I I need to revisit some of the really important points you were talking about. So it puts me back on the right path. Tell me about your neck. Tell me about how the, I know the the thoracic outlet, right? Mm -hmm. That channel there. How's that all been feeling? Anything? Yeah, it's, it's feeling. Yeah, symptoms have not been as bad. Like. I was having some discoloration in the hand and mm -hmm. some weird symptoms because of that compression. Yes. But it's not as bad as before. I'm, I'm creating this friendly relationship with it and realizing what makes it worse and not. And yeah. Okay. I know we talked about last time, a lot of the uh, goal is to, I call it soft tissue rehabilitation. We've mm -hmm. got to get your back supple to make the stretching more functional and more effective. And so today we're going to do that continuation, go back through your spine continue digging deeper. Hopefully we'll see uh, a little bit more depth that I can go and see how much gua sha yes. comes out. And then we're going to end our visit with some, some stretching that yes. we talked about last time and then give you some stuff to take home. Yeah. Is there anything new, anything changed, any, anything else, we've, anything different uh, from no, last time? No, symptoms have been the same. I know you mentioned that we need to bring work on the chest or the thoracic region yes. in order to bring the neck backwards. So I still have that mindset, but symptom wise, it's been the same. Some low, left low back pain, sciatica happening, Ever since that move, because I moved heavy furniture. You know when you lift weights? Yes. It's under, it's under a certain, like, movement where it's strict. But, like, when you're moving furniture, you're, like, bending in weird situations. So the back wasn't used to it. Take a deep breath in. Let the jaw relax. Let the air out the mouth. And then deep breath in. Head back. Let it all go. I know. Ah. I know. Oh, oh, that's painful. Yeah, I got you, brother. Next. Um, yeah, we oh, yeah. Wow, that, that area is so yeah. stubborn. It's okay, we'll get it. It's, he's frozen in that middle back. That's, so part of what we, like we said earlier, as well as saying with couple motion, you can't get your head back because this is frozen. There we go, exhale, it's okay. Okay, twist, I got you, bud. It's okay, exhale. Uh -huh. I'm trying to loosen this middle back up. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Exhale. Look over this shoulder best you can. I know. All right, good. Face up for me. Good. It is not bad to be apprehensive. It's good to be aware of who you allow to touch your neck and are, are they able to work on me without injuring the parts of my spine that are injured and, and try to reestablish motion in the areas that need it. This actually feels pretty soft, actually, relatively compared to that chest. I got you, buddy. Just this top guy a little bit. Let me have his head. Relax here. There we go. A little gentle. Chin up for me. There you go. Good. All right. Let's go deeper in a second. Let's go. All right. Maybe the knuckles. All right. Yeah. I think my head, the thumb pressure is too easy. Bring in the knuckles. Yeah. Let me get all. Knuckles don't get tired. So we're doing a little bit of boot camp here. He's traveling to get here, so we're trying to get as much as we can. There we go. I got you. I got you out of here. Good. Yeah, I usually use the um, I use the uh, the, the ferrocane mm -hmm. on those areas. Mm -hmm. um, Good. Good. Pressure is not going to be foreign to them today. They've had somebody. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good substitute for, for a girlfriend, to be honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not for a wife. <laughs> <laughs> Not good substitutes. Can't get to those areas. <laughs> of course, sometimes Carl's like, after about 30 seconds, I'm tired, my hands are sore. <laughs> I don't know how you I do this all day. There's times when I don't get out.
crunchy. Yeah. It really interests me, you know, like <laughs> how much issues we have with our spine, like all over like the place, like everybody. Right. And it kind of like questions me, like, uh, are we really built to stand up? <laughs> Super interesting question here. Why are we, do we have so much spine problems? Maybe we have to be on our, on our fours or something. Well, I think if, I think the only closest thing I have is, is dentistry. You know, people had a lot more dental problems until they started teaching people to brush. We become more sedentary. You know, people moved a lot more. We didn't have iPhones. We weren't rounding forward. The we weren't you know sitting in cars and traveling. You know, and so the we were farming, fishing, hunting. You know, we were moving around more, and so. I think we're meant to stand and walk and move. We're not meant to like sit and bend forward for, <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. for 10 hours a day. I have kids that come in here, teenagers, young teenagers, and I ask them, calculate how many hours a day you sit. And the average answer I get is something like 14 to 16 hours a day oh. that, that they're sitting. And that's not being viewed negatively. Much better. Very, very slight right there, but that's what I was feeling right in there. You sort of see right there, it's coming out, but much better. I think the last time, you know, eventually no mark comes out, and ultimately this shouldn't need to be done every time. Really, I only do this the first handful of times. Once, once the tissue's clean, I don't, I don't sweep if there's nothing to sweep. <laughs> you know, if there's if if the tissue's moving properly. Really, we adjust, get to stretch, and see you later. Have a nice, have a nice month. Were you pretty sore last time? How was that? Um, well, this time I took the um, uh, the supplements, that, enzymes. Yeah, oh. yeah, the enzymes. Perfect I took the enzymes, like three of them. Excellent. And I drank a lot of water. So. Beautiful. Awesome. Beautiful. And I have um, some some more after after the, the session. But yeah, we can we see the huge difference there, Krom. That's what we got to work on. Same rules apply. If I'm going too hard, let me know. I'm going to try to ride the wave of your tolerance. Sure. Okay, here we go. Pushing really hard. Okay. <laughs> I feel like you're rocking the entire table. It's because I'm giving him everything I got. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Yes. Right there is. Feels like an air bubble in there. Mm -hmm. When we bend forward, the joints space open, which allows fluid to infiltrate, and that's what then causes a T joint effusion, which then swells up the tissue around posturally. That's what allows this to be so sore. The muscles work harder. Remember how I showed you when we were standing? When I'm upright, it's soft. Mm -hmm. I bend forward, the muscles get tight. Yeah. The muscles, it's not their job to hold you in the right position. There are a lot of people teaching that. I just say, good luck. Constantly trying to have your muscles strong enough to pull against these ligaments that are holding you forward. It's rather, I would suggest we stretch the ligaments on the front, the anterior longitudinal ligament needs to be stretched to allow your body to just want to be upright and that's where, you, that's where you'll be and where you want to be. But we can't even get to that ligament without compressing all these joints. We can't stretch the front ligament if all this fluid and inflammation is back here. So we got to spend time compressing all this tissue and then inch by inch, millimeter by millimeter, getting you to arch back and then it's like a journey. You just will see where the edge is, and the edge will move like an army advancing. You know, you'll eventually keep moving forward. It's like a journey. You just will see where the edge is, and the edge will move like an army advancing. You know, you'll eventually keep moving forward.
the next step of your care is actually take you into extension and work on you bending back. Oh, that right? would be. Instead of just working on you in neutral. There you go. So by you arching back, you're actually compressing the joints just by the position you're in. And then I can further close the joint with my elbow. Right there, that's what eventually causes the sciatica is this. Can't take any more lay flat. But I'm just see yeah. as long as you can take it. I think I've flattened out right now. <laughs> no, okay, but you're doing good. No, you're still harshing up. As long as you're still harshing up a little bit. Yeah, working on your cobra, working on your arching back. Breathe for a second. Breathe. Yeah, my body is resisting. It's okay. It's defending itself. <laughs> <laughs> Spending some time here. He's got to get oh. mm -hmm, all these joints compressed right there. Mm -hmm, right there. Mm. I wish there was a way to turn off the pain receptors. <laughs> Adjust you in an anesthesia. Yeah. I know, I know. Just as you can like close your eyes, you get to decide to, okay, I'm shutting down my pain receptors for go. the next hour. There you go. Oh. Then we wouldn't realize the beauty of when I can work on you and nothing hurts. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You won't realize how beautiful that is. That, and I can't believe how your work no longer <laughs> is sore. Yeah, there's no normal soreness or no normal tenderness. There's no normal spasms. There's no normal tension. It's all it's like my mom's car's got door dents. My dad's car's got door dents. So my car has door dents. And that's just the way it is. Like, no, it isn't. <laughs> the stuff that's happened to you and... We can treat it and remove it and don't just consign to it and give up. That's the rear belt, right? Uh, it, rotator cuff, infraspinatus here. I mean, yes, posterior delt right here. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. A little bit of teres coming down into here. Mm -hmm. Rotator cuff right here. This is infra.
26 is full skeletal maturity. So whatever posture you're in at 26, it's harder to change it. And this is where I adjust children in my office and someone might say, why do you have to adjust a child? They're, they don't have any symptoms, They're, they feel fine. Again, we're, we're trying to help align them into the right position. Or how about this, when they have injuries, not make their posture worse and they heal in the wrong position. So kids have falls, you know, bicycle accidents, football, base, you know, whatever, you know, sliding, soccer injuries, and I don't let them heal in an avoidance position. And that's what, how your posture is. The front part of your spine has relatively zero feeling relative to the back side, so kids will always have a desire to slouch. That's why your grandmother yelled at you, to, sit up straight, right? Yeah. Because the front part of your spine has no feeling, and it just feels better. It feels better to round forward than it does to sit up straight. I mean, like Ehler Danlos, there's people with ligament laxity disorders. Those right. would be based on, but just because somebody has a ligament laxity doesn't make usually. I mean, I have people with no ligament laxity the bad posture. It's not like you just consigned. Scoliosis is not this thing to be demonized either. I have people with some. I would say the top ten worst people in my office in terms of symptoms and pain. None of them scoliosis. You understand? If I'm going to demonize scoliosis, then those people should all be my top. Right, most symptomatic, most dysfunctional people. So I don't accept demonization of it. You know, my father has no scoliosis, and he has probably one of the worst backs <laughs> in terms of the injuries that he sustained and care that has hurt him, and some has helped him. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. So I, I have people that have you know taken you know numbers of oxys and you know, trying to get pain relief because they're, they've been suffering for years and they have no scoliosis, <laughs> but they have disc injury, they have arthritis, they have nerve pressure, it's, you know, it's, so I don't accept the, that line of thought of like, okay, well, even if scoliosis is some, if it's structural, there's two types of scoliosis, first of all, there's functional, you have, if you break your right ankle and you put all your weight on your left ankle, you'll create a scoliosis because you're avoiding your right side. Oh, wow. So we call that a functional scoliosis is avoidance. Generally, when people are talking about scoliosis, they're not talking about functional scoliosis. They're talking about structural scoliosis. You so on an x-ray, you're able to tell between the difference, like the functional and no. like the birth ones? No, nope. you nope, cannot. You can't tell. You, wow. you have to work on them. I mean, if somebody has a structural, they, some, I mean, there's, again, small percentages of structural are hemivertebrae. Somebody can be born with a vertebrae that didn't form properly, and it formed in a lateral wedge. Functional is, again... The only way to get rid of that is to get rid of the thing that hurts and then your body won't avoid it, thereby getting rid of the laterality. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. When you no longer need to avoid something because it no longer hurts, the scoliosis goes away. Structural is the actual spinal cord is not long enough. So your brain is tethered, is the, the extension of your brain is your spinal cord. That goes all the way down to your tailbone. Mm -hmm. As your chest is growing, the nervous system has to grow also. Oh. Nice. So what ends up happening is if your bones grow faster than your spinal cord can grow, which happens all the time during a growth spurt, the spine will buckle laterally to relieve pressure on the spinal cord. Oh, man. I've never it reminds, me of, reminds me of drivers that take a corner and they cut the corner, right? They're making it. They're not taking that wide loop around the corner. They're cutting it. Does that make sense? Yes. The spinal cord does the same thing. It cuts the corner while the spinal column bends laterally. It's done to alleviate spinal cord pressure. They've tried on certain scoliotic patients structural where they take the spine and they pull it straight and they call it spinal cord tethering. The brain actually starts to get pulled into the neck. Oh my god. So you'll see the dangerous. medulla, the you know, the part of the upper part of the lower part of the brain stem starts to get pulled into the neck because the spinal cord is not long enough. Wow. And so I never thought of that. That's how are you going to fix it? Make the person's spinal cord grow. You can't there's no can't well, do we don't that. have that technology. My spinal column is too long. Like if you pull my spinal column straight, I'd be six foot three, six foot four. I'm six foot two because my spinal cord is that long. Mm, okay. I can only be as long as my nervous system. The column just houses it.
I don't think I can, I can go up. It's okay. It's okay. We're just going to... Oh, this is going to be scary, man. I got you, brother. It's okay. We're real gentle. Here we go. There you go. Breathe. It's okay. Mm-hmm. I got you. Oh, good. We're just stretching. I got you. You okay? Too much? I think it's good. Okay. I think I'm just mentally scared. I know. I'm not going to go more than you can handle. Oh. Good. Okay. I got you, but breathe. Let's go on your back for me and check your neck again. It's very foreign for that for my body to be in that position. There you go. There we go. There you go. Yeah. This was so fluid filled when you first came in. There was needed some time to dissipate that fluid. I got your head. It's okay. There we go. Relax here. Relax. Beautiful. Did great. You okay? Yes. All right. Let him sit up for me. I got a pretty good face down this one. You get a different angle on it. Let's see if I miss anything. There we go. It's kind of a fold right here. It's where, like, a, when you're cleaning a tub or a shower, it's like the crease. You know, it's hard to get the scrubber in there. This is right where the neck and shoulders meet, so it's like right there is a easy place for things to hide. It's 20, 20 minute sessions is our first checkpoint with stretching. So if you did two a day, it'd be 10 days, <laughs> three a day, it'd be seven days. That makes sense. You're trying to get 20 sessions for 20 minutes. Uh, you can spread it out once a day, it'd be 20 days, you know, but that's, that's your first checkpoint with getting your neck to mold into the right position. The device that we're going to show you in a second, which is what Carl was saying, was a thoracic denaral, and it's designed to go in between your shoulder blades. Now, its intensity is going to be much higher because the amount of misalignment that your chest is in is, is greater than your neck. The neck might get a little warm or tingling. That's a normal, that, why was that? It shouldn't happen, but it happens because your neck isn't used to being in the right position. As your neck gets used to the right position, it'll go away. Um, Do I leave my neck to just hang? Yes, yeah, you're trying to just stay loose, right? Yep, your back eventually, see how you're, you're still about a gap here between the back of your yeah. head and the ground? As your neck conforms more, you actually feel that almost the back of your head will touch the ground as your as the neck mm -hmm. complies with the mold yes it's your it's the loss of cervical lordosis which makes this yeah. feel odd or difficult yeah and you mentioned one part of the neck was working more right than, and, and then the top part was not moving right? was frozen we got it all moving now that's what i'm saying so this is as easy as it's going to be right now you know maybe a few days from now and it wasn't as easy as when mm -hmm. <laughs> right after the adjustment correct because i got you all nice and loose and now we're molding but Keep working on it. It's like I said, the only contraindications, if anything 
gets worse in the arms or no, I'm not feeling anything. Good, yeah, you shouldn't. But that again, if it's been a, the general procedure is that you you know if you're not being adjusted for about a month, you shouldn't really use the Denerol. It's meant to be used in concert with care, mm -hmm. in the direction and supervision of a chiropractor. Otherwise, I would get on QVC and sell Denerols. You understand? I, I can't really do that mm -hmm. because it's meant to be used as a patient in the office and you're being monitored. Now, a person that's been adjusted for a year in my office, I give them a longer leash and they can go months without being adjusted and still use their Denerol. You know, the, the leash does get longer. And you get a little downward pull. That makes sense, a little bit downward tissue pull. So you make your contact and then the tissue, you have it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. angled downwards on your back. And then if it's, you know, you can put it on the side, but you just wanna, you wanna work on all those angles. And then you go a little lower. You know, that whole, the whole range is between your shoulder blades is where this device uh, shines. You come a little lower. The main, I, my head will not touch anymore. Though. I know, yeah, that's what we, yeah, yeah, I got you, I got your head, I got you. Where's the, it's okay. You put your arms, it's okay. Yeah, but use put, one of those. Use that, do that tissue there, pull though, I want you, oh. remember, remember I want you to slide upwards, up this way. Oh. Get the idea? Oh, okay, See, yeah. Make sure you have that, and let your head relax, now you should be able to really make it, almost like, not, no, too no much, way. Yeah. too much. There's no way it's gonna make it. It's okay if you let it go to the edge though. You understand, you have to try to, you're not gonna hurt if something goes down your arm, you stop. Do you mm -hmm. understand? If you're pinching, but you need to try to go to that edge. Um, I know it's so foreign to you that it's going to feel dangerous, but I promise you, I haven't even showed you what I really want to do. Oh my! And, and you can handle it. I promise you. You're, you're, you don't have anything broken in there. You have to start angling pressure in there. Come on, let me see. Let me see. Come on. There you go. There you go. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Let it. Let it be okay. It's tough. It's tough. I think it's just uh, mental for me at the moment. Okay, if it's pinching, then we back off. But I feel my my chest. Good, like, good. Let it opening let it. up like you, a. You gotta let it. Like a little butterfly. Mm -hmm. As you're working on those nerves that go to your heart in there, in between your shoulder blades, mm -hmm. you know you can get like a sympathetic, you know, fight or flight type response. Yeah. Okay. So don't try to put music on, meditate. You know, let it. Okay, it's okay. I got your head. I think there's a slight, like, slight uh, pinch. Sl yeah, it's very, very minimal, though, like 5%. Okay. I feel mm -hmm. it in my forearm. I'm like, shouldn't have gotten a little bit, but it's. Right. Put the arm down. Arm down. Yeah, you just. Then, we have to, then, you just, then you back off a little bit. Then mm -hmm. you put a, another book behind your head. Do you understand? At home, you put a book back here, and you let your head come up a little bit, and don't go so far back, and then try to ride that edge. Mm 